I thought it would be super fun to reach back into the past, back to 2011 and subsequent years, and share some of my old blog posts with you, which were actually the launching pad to this podcast. They're all posted in a section called Thoughts by Me on my website. I'll put a link in the description. And there's actually some fun recipes on there that I had completely forgotten about that I will be revisiting. And there's some interesting challenges, like life challenges that I challenged myself to, that I blogged about. Kind of fun. So let's take a blast to the past. Thoughts from the electronics store, August 24th of 2016. Whenever I decide to declare things into the air, God calls me out on them. My fleshly nature likes to point at someone who's doing something I consider wrong and declare that if I was in that situation, I would never do it wrong like them. It's what a dear friend of mine and I call log sign. Let me get that twig out of your eye for you. Just ignore the 30-foot tree sticking out of my eye. Boy, I sure can be arrogant and holier than thou when I don't take charge of my own thoughts. A few years ago, Hubby was angry and threw his phone against the cabinet, which obliterated it. I cast judgment on him for it and was angry that we had to waste hundreds of dollars to immediately replace it when there were other necessities needed. God forbid someone go without a cell phone in this day and age. People are so lost without their technology and it seems to be getting worse, but that's a different post for another time. Apparently, I was still holding on to this unforgiving thought, which God graciously reminded me of Friday evening when I was called out for my judgment. I'm not making excuses, just giving a reason. This vertigo stuff is still kicking my butt and trying my patience after two months of it. The doctors have yet to figure out the cause of it or my fainting spells. It's hard to look at technology as much as I need to be looking at it right now. Life seems to revolve around it anymore. I separated from my job in April after an injury last September left me with only partial use of my dominant hand, making it frustratingly difficult and turning me into a snail at my job. Yet another unfortunate log sawing event amongst other lessons from above. I couldn't accomplish my normal tasks anymore in a reasonable amount of time. The end of the day would arrive and I still had half of my daily tasks left. I was panicked, overwhelmed, and defeated by night's end. I tried for another two weeks before admitting I couldn't do what I was being asked to do. I hate admitting defeat. So now I'm in search of a different job. Friday night, I was filling out an application after finding out that another place I'd applied to was not something I can physically do. Irritated already, I came to the end of the 45 minute long application and my tablet locked up. So I smacked the screen with my palm a few times, like this ever helps, and my wedding ring, which is slightly too big, flipped around and punctured the screen. I watched it slowly spiderweb over the next 30 seconds, my heart sinking as I knew I really needed the tablet for job hunting and a volunteer photography project I was doing on Sunday. I have a laptop, but when it updated last, somehow it made it have errors on it, so it doesn't work correctly anymore and locks up constantly. I called Hubby at work frantic from my stupidity, interrupting his work day because of my foolishness, ridiculousness. My temporary loss of self-control cost us $200, all for a silly temper tantrum that did not make me feel better even for one second. I wasted money that was needed on other necessities like I'd blamed him for years ago. Who am I to say that's unforgivable? I won't forgive you for that. 
I'm reminded of the Lord's Prayer, Luke 11, 4, and how God has forgiven me for some pretty awful things that I deserve to pay dearly for. Forgive me as I forgive others is a scary thing to pray when there are things we hold against others. I don't want to be held to all my mistakes and shortcomings. I would be an outcast by the end of the day if I was made to pay for all my boo-boos. I am reminded yet again that I am a work in progress and am in training for the kingdom to come. Thank you so much for being here today. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button right there for me. And click the bell if you want notifications. And hit that like button too. And I will see you next time. Maranatha! Where he leads. We were made to love, we were made to give. The reason why we're here, the reason why he gave us life. We were made to show the love of Christ. We know this is why we're here. This is why he gave us life. So let his love shine through in everything we do. It's all for love.